Welcome to the Swipe Right Effect podcast, where we will be sharing with you the power to get unstuck by swiping right on yourself. Your host, author C.K. Collins, a.k.a. Kelly, gets personal with her guests, sharing stories of themselves getting unstuck with wisdom and guidance. Where do you feel stuck? Are you waiting to get your new life started after a big change? You've come to the right place. So with that said, let's get started. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking in with the Swipe Right Effect, the power to get unstuck. I am C.K. Collins, a.k.a. Kelly. And today we have a wonderful guest. I'm so excited to introduce you to Tasha Chen. So let me tell her real quick, tell you a little bit about her. Um, Tasha is the founder of the Science of Getting Rich Academy and the international best-selling author of Deservingness, the Art of Getting More of What You Want. She helps her clients manifest their greatest desires using a time-tested program with her unique proven principles. Implementing universal laws, such as the law of attraction, which we talk about here all the time, Tasha has helped transform the lives of hundreds. She has cracked the code to creating abundance, happiness, wealth, and health. So Tasha, welcome. I'm so excited to talk to you. Thank you, Kelly. I'm excited for this conversation myself because it's so exciting <laughs> to see where we will go. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to keep you on your toes, young lady. <laughs> yep, yep. So um, just a little bit of background of how Tasha and I met. We met at a conference in Utah, I think in April. Yeah, it was in yeah, April. Yeah, yeah. And um, I have to say, you were absolutely instrumental in the program that I've created called Momentum, uh, where wise women connect. And just everything you've done with your business inspired me to expand my mind and really give myself permission to think bigger, dream bigger, and then believe bigger. So thank you for that. You are welcome. And I've loved watching your journey. I'm so excited for the women that get to participate in Momentum because I know the heart that you have. I know where it was birthed. You yeah. know? <laughs> and I'm just, I'm excited for the women that say yes to that. Yeah. So your... um well, let's start with what is wealth, because that when I was on your podcast, that was a conversation that you and I had, not to preempt your <laughs> your viewing of podcasts, but um, for my listeners, let's talk a little bit about defining what wealth is for each person. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting because as you know, I, that's a question I ask all of my guests, what's their definition of wealth? And so mine is probably like 10 pages long now because each person just adds a little nugget that I've never thought of. But I'm going to start with a quote that my 16 year old son sent to me recently. And he said, to be rich is to have money, to be wealthy is to own your time. Wow. And that was like, <laughs> right? Wow. So there are all these things that we can add to it. Um, and I think just to, to catapult from that is that one of my top three values is freedom. And so for me to be wealthy is to have the fullest expression of freedom, especially with time, because mm. it's the one thing we can't buy, right? right? So to have the fullest expression of freedom is my definition of wealth. And then I would add, and especially the freedom of choice. You know, I always tell people, sure, you can have a lot of money and that means you can buy a lot of things. But for me, it's not even that I, I, I have a lot of money and I'm buying a lot of things. I love Kelly that I can choose to do it. <laughs> like yeah. it's such a subtle but powerful distinction for me personally. So in my definition of wealth, it is that I own my time. Mm. I own myself. <laughs> I am free to do what I want, when I want, with who I want, wherever I want. And I can choose every area of my life includes the ability to choose one way or the other, because money is not a consideration. Right. And so for me, that's, that's to be wealthy. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So I'm going to bounce right off of that because okay. my mind was spinning because in momentum, I mean, already some of the people who've signed up are, are corporate women. And yeah. so part of their time is owned 
by other people. Right. And, and I, you know, they are out there doing amazing things. And one woman in particular, I spoke with on Friday, she said, I, I love my job. I, I see the glass ceiling. I know it's there, but I see the women who are ahead of me that are breaking that ceiling for me. Yeah. But I'm so busy doing the job, the J-O-B, that I'm not sure I'm making the impact on the world that I want to make. And so that, and that's what momentum is about. And that's, that's the women we're attracting to be in the program. So when somebody does own your time and you're in a corporate setting like that, what, what would you say to them about how to still maintain that feeling? Yeah, so I did this, I did a, a Facebook Live this morning where I talked about the three things around wealth creation that I'm personally contemplating right now. So this is like real time live. <laughs> and 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 it like, it answers that question, because I said, you know, really ask yourself, set your timer for eight minutes on your phone, this is something everyone should do. And ask yourself, why do I want to be wealthy? Like, why do I want that? Mm -hmm. And in, just let it be for eight minutes. Allow your conscious and your subconscious mind to present like a movie to you. Like what's really going on up here around wealth? Mm -hmm. And then when you have that and you've journaled your answer, like really frame the question now from the, the place of, and I say, I've been contemplating who, what, and how around wealth creation. And the, the piece with the women who are currently in corporate and maybe possibly wanting to make the transition or just saying, you know, th I love my career, but I, it's like, I'm not feeling like I'm able to contribute in the way that I would I'd like to. And that's part of their definition for wealth, right? Mm -hmm. That unfulfilled piece is a calling that's saying, I want to feel like I'm making an impact. I want to feel like I'm fulfilled. And, and that's included in your definition of wealth, right? That is the ultimate. And so for, for me, my thoughts would be, okay, well, within the container that I'm in right now, it's kind of like, okay, yes, I own my own business. And so, you know, I have made a certain level of income, but within this level of income, there are things in my definition of wealth that I'm not currently able to do, right? So right. same thing in the job, there are things in my definition of wealth that I'm not yet currently able to do. And so I would say, get really clear if you have to work this job for the rest of your life, because either you choose to, or it's just part of your life plan. Well then, okay, how does it, how can you find a way to reframe it to see the impact, the way mm -hmm. it fulfills you, like re look through a separate set of glasses that mirrors back to you. Okay, you know what, this is how um, my definition of wealth is being realized in this position. Otherwise, you're going to feel disempowered and controlled. And that just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so, <totally> sucks. <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't want that yeah. for any woman. I truly want to empower you to just take those glasses off that says, I'm not able to make the impact that I want to and go, okay, well, in this scenario, like kind of like me, right? Yeah, I want a mega bazillion dollar home someday. But within this scenario, I'm going to buy my first multi million dollar house right? Because mm -hmm. that's like where I can and that's my fulfillment today. And so I always just switch it back to give myself power. I love it. Yeah, that's great. And to and to recognize that it, as you've moved up, and you have broken those glass ceilings, that um, the women coming behind you generationally are yeah. impacted by that. And so that is um, that's legacy, you know, that's a, a wealth of legacy. And I think that's, um, a lot of what I want women to see is how much they have to offer. And that part of their wealth is just their past life, their experience, yes. that heart that they've grown from all of that, the, the knowledge, the, I mean, there's just so much that women in their forties, fifties, sixties, seventies know, that we all yeah. wish we'd known when we were in our twenties. Yeah, but you have to learn on your own, and and but that's part of wealth too. I I really believe that. So you're right. If she can reframe the impact she's made in the workplace, that makes it more fulfilling as opposed to um, a struggle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and specifically with this is what I do for a living. You know, how does what I do for a living 
fulfill me. There's got to be some aspect of it that's fulfilling. How does it offer me some piece of what I define wealth to be, right? So like, I know my my ex-husband, for example, he is a corporate guy through and through. And so part of his definition of wealth is financial security, Mm -hmm. right? And so being in a job where it's guaranteed you're going to get paid, you know, like that's a way that his definition of wealth is being fulfilled. So it's like, also, hey, like entrepreneurship might sell out there in the streets as freedom. But you know, when you have nine to five at five, it's done. Right. You know? So yeah. it's, it's just a different way. But another thing that I wanted to suggest to women too, especially if that's where they are, there are at the moment is I, I, I shared with my listeners this morning, get really clear on as you are creating wealth, who is impacted? And when you can answer the who, that's the who, like how is this making the world a better place? How is this making my family better? How is this making my friends better? This job, right? This is my source of wealth right now. But who is benefiting because I am going to this job. And it's just, it is amazing how you can start to rewire the way you see your circumstances Mm -hmm. um, instead of being limiting to actually, wow, there's a lot here to be grateful for. And there's, and back to your point, there's a lot of legacy that I am, that I am leaving behind in the world in general, in my family, with my friends and my community, because I have this job. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about how you created this job for yourself, because we all, anybody who's a coach, (laughs) has a story of how they, they saw a problem and they had a solution. And basically a coach's job is to figure out how to get that message out and help the people, help provide the solution to those who need it and recognize that they need it. So tell us your story about how you got started. Well, I, I'll say that I saw the problem for myself <laughs> first. That too, yes. <laughs> right? Same. So I I had just filed, I had just, I had like the trifecta all at once within six months. I, my husband at the time and I, we filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy. We mm-hmm. had a, a very successful business and, you know, seven figures really quickly. And then overnight, it was just like, whoosh. so that was number one. Uh, then he asked me for a divorce. (laughs) That was number two. And then the third one was that I realized in building that business, my young children did not, they had no idea who mom was. Right. Mm. I remember coming home one day and in my living room was this big whiteboard and it had like each kid and their activities and the time of everything. And I walked in the house and I just paused for a second to look at the board and realize my name was nowhere on there. Wow. Like everything involved in my kids was being taken care of by others and I wasn't even involved. And so between the kids and my health, like Tata as a person had just ceased to mm-hmm. exist, you know? And so I'm newly divorced. My husband's income is gone. <laughs> I have no business. And yes, I'm getting child support and a little alimony, but really that's a fraction of what the bills are that needs right. to be covered. And I remember every single day I would, hi, you know, be happy mommy, drop the kids off to school, drive home in tears, sit on the kitchen floor in complete fear all day about money. Like, how am I going to resolve this? And then I would put on happy mommy, drive, pick up the kids, come back home. And every day I noticed after a while that this thing would happen where I would open the mailbox and every afternoon there would be the evidence to prove to me that I was a financial failure and everything that I was fearing was in fact true. So I would get overdraft notices, the big past due in red on the front of the envelope, you know, you name it, it was there every day. But this one day, Kelly, I got to the mailbox, the kids are in the car. I opened the mailbox. I know exactly what's going to be in there. And I just happened to glance over at my son and our eyes made contact. He was maybe, I don't know, six, maybe seven. And our eyes made contact and I looked away really quickly. And it was just, it's such a sliver of a moment. But in that moment, I asked myself, why did you do that? Why did you look away? And the answer was, I am ashamed 
I feel guilty. I feel wrong. I cannot believe I've gotten to this place. Mm, And I also like this fire just got lit. And it was like, I will not have this be the legacy for my kids. I will not. This will not go down in history like this. And that's all I had was that desire. Went back in the car, went in home. The bills were still there. Everything was still there. But the next day I woke up and as I, as I, recognize I was in fear in my mind I grabbed this journal and I wrote the opposite of what I was afraid of Mm. right so one of my greatest fears was that I told you my top value is freedom so one of my greatest fears was if I went and made money whether it was a job or starting a business I was going to give up my freedom and I told you I'd seen that I was never there for my kids and I didn't want that again so while I'm making money. So literally had this tug of war in my head going, I want to make money, but I don't want to, I don't want to lose my freedom and I don't want to be yeah. away from my kids. And so my first entry in that journal, and I wish I would have known this is where you're going because I, I would have brought the journal. My first entry was I can have success and money too. Mm. I, I can have freedom I can have like I can have both of everything you know Um, and that's what I did every single day I would just I mean sometimes it was minute by minute but I became committed to changing my thoughts around the fears I had um, regarding money and that's where it started and that commitment just led to all these other things another thing that I did was I said okay God here's the deal I know I still want to be an entrepreneur because that's the way I can see me getting this freedom thing I value so much. I know I want to do something that lights me up and is fulfilling as all get out. And I know that I want it to be fun. Like (laughs) that's it. Those are it. That's it, God. And I, I'm sorry. And I want financial freedom, right? Right, right, So I, those are the things I don't know where you're going to take me, but just give me these four things, wherever you take me, God, give me these four things. And so Kelly, what happened was I, I started on this journey. I met, I met other people that gave me the book, the science of getting rich. I read it. I didn't read it. I practiced it and it changed my life. And the rest is history. I literally took those, those three things, right? Changing my thoughts, making that deal with God (laughs) and reading and living the signs of getting rich. And then I started showing other women. First group was 10 women in my Mm. little town. I said, Hey, you want to meet for coffee once a week? I'll show you how to use this book to change your life, change your business, change your finances. And here I am 10 years later, you know, $155 million now recorded that women have created. Um, and just, the rest is history, <laughs> right? The rest is history. You know, and I think when um, I was reading or listening to actually the magic by Rhonda Byrne, and she's like, when you're manifesting wealth, when you're manifesting abundance and money to that, you have to recognize, like you said, 155 million recorded, which is wow. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's recorded. But then yeah, because there are people who don't what tell I you. thought of is she said, <laughs> Wealth comes to you in so many different ways. The time that somebody picks up your lunch check, Mm that when you get an unexpected discount on a big item or, you know, Mm -hmm. just like those things all add up to your abundance and your wealth. And um, so it's amazing. I mean, imagine what's not recorded out of (laughs) of all the people that you've worked with and helped because that's, that's incredible. I I love it. All right. I want to be you when I grow up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we all want to be each other and I I like remember your trips and all the things that you share I remember reading your bio going oh my gosh I want to be her I told you that when I met yes. you she's living my life wait what is that wait a second yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you got to travel for a year what the yeah heck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was it was pretty great and I want to keep on doing that so but I want to you know bring my message out into the world which I believe that women um, gathering gathers my word for the year. Yeah. Women gathering and learning from each other is, um, that that's my number one priority, but really it's just what they're going to learn from each other. I hope is that we all have a legacy to share. Yes. Yes. And, and obviously this is your legacy. I mean, you're, you're just, you beam, (laughs) 
if you're only listening to this on the podcast, go to YouTube and find the video so you can see how this woman beams. <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, so let's talk about how um, women have, and I, this is my word, not yours, Tasha. So you probably have a better way to put it, but sometimes they have a scarcity mindset. Um, I know when I'm talking to women about the momentum program, of course, there's a fee with it and I, I see it and I recognize it because I too have it. There's a fear around investing. What if I need that money for something else instead of saying I'm worth it and I'm going to invest in myself. Yeah, I did do that. I, I, you know, I paid the money to go to that conference. I hired a, a coach to help me build my coaching business because I wanted it to be a great coaching business since I didn't just wing it. I, yeah, you know, I got help. I invested in myself. And so when you, when people have that scarcity mindset and you probably, you know, have a better way to frame this, but what, what do you advise on how to make it, you know, okay, get a mindset around, I am worth it. And I am going to invest in myself. Well, my answer has two parts. One of the one of the messages you know I'm very passionate about is deservingness. And what do I deserve? I deserve to be supported. Right? I deserve on this life's journey. It's not a I, I don't love self-improvement. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. love self-reliance. I don't love any of the selves, anything. Yeah. Because the the truth is doing it on your own is not easy, right? I deserve to be. And that's a thing with with us women sometimes. It's like, oh no, I got this, <laughs> you know? And it's like, why? why? Why do you have to got it, you know? So for me, I have just embodied, I deserve to be supported. That's my number one like claim to everything that I have is mm. I deserve it. And so the second part was when you find yourself in a moment where there, the illusion is that there's limited supply of anything, including money. I just want to, I encourage women to say, it's like I was having a conversation with a, a lady recently and she said, oh my God, Tasha, I would love to be a goddess, but I just can't afford it right now. Mm. And I said, you are right. Literally, you just told the infinite supply of the universe. Do you know how much money is in the infinite supply? Like infinite, there is no ending. And you literally just said, me here, human, I cannot, I cannot um, get any of that for myself. I, I cannot have it. You literally just said, no, yourself. And so for me, I just always want to remind women, especially we live in an infinite supply of wealth infinite do wrap your head around that there is the only limits to it is when you say there is Mm -hmm. and so one of the things that I make a practice of doing literally this is I am so committed to this Kelly every time I see myself in that limitation I make the choice to invest. I make the choice. I bought a $150 little summer dress. I could have gotten at Marshall's for maybe $15 Mm -hmm. because the moment I looked at the dress, I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. I need this in my life. I looked at the price tag and it was $150. And my mind goes, oh no, 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 no way am I paying that for this. And I also in that second realized my friend was was in the store with me at the moment. And I realized you know, if she walked over here right now and said she wanted it, oh my God, I would be like, surprise her, wrap it up, buy it. my mom, my daughter, my anybody but me, I would gladly pay the $150. Yeah. So it was me that I wasn't valuing, right? Mm. It, that's what I, and so in that moment, I was like, oh no, we're breaking this pattern. I'm buying this dress <laughs> and I don't even wear right. it anymore. I still have it hanging up to remind me And so I would say when you find yourself in that moment where you're thinking about lack, there isn't enough, you're afraid, like really ask yourself, is that really true? Right? Is that is there not enough money? Is that really true? And number two, or is is it that I'm really not standing in, I deserve to invest in myself, the greatest investment we'll ever make is in ourselves. The greatest ROI you will ever have in your life on any investment is you. 
right? And so that's really my thing. And I and I also, you know, I encourage women when they say there's not enough, I'm afraid, I don't know if the money will be there in the future. I say, if you start practicing taking leaps of faith financially, you will build such a muscle where literally it is like ask and receive with the universe with money because it's like you strip yourself every time you do it you reduce the limitations and the fear one by one I have on my desk right here my mentor and I were having a conversation and she told me she was going to launch a program that was a hundred thousand dollars wow and so she was talking to me as at this point, we were not in a, I had worked with her years ago and we've just stayed friends. And she was like, you know, what would you want in it, Tasha? And so we're talking and talking and she's telling me what she's going to do. And before she's done, I'm like, not even that I want to be in the program. I want to be the woman who can invest a hundred thousand dollars in me. I was yeah. like, what kind of woman does that? Right. Who she <laughs> is. I want to be her. And so Kelly, the thing that I did was I grabbed a check and I wrote it to her for a hundred thousand dollars. I wrote this in June of last year, June, 22, 22. I just wrote the check. I didn't, there was not a hundred thousand dollars in this account for this to cash <laughs> at the time, right? Nothing other than my intent to demonstrate I can easily access a hundred thousand mm. dollars in the end. I joined the program when she ultimately created it in November. She had a payment plan. I'm doing it on a payment plan. But just because of my intent to demonstrate, there is no lack. I will be in that program one way or the other, right? Wow. Here I am. Wow. Yeah. So now I'm looking at a woman who invests $100,000 in herself. <laughs> That's right. I, I am that, that woman. <laughs> He's such a badass. <laughs> the fun so, part of that was telling my husband. <laughs> he was like, what are you going to get for $100,000? Yeah. And here was the interesting thing. I said, I don't know the details. I don't even know the details. What I know is that I am the woman who invests $100,000 in her business. And the energy of that and what it's going to produce for me is the return. Like, that's enough. And he goes, let's go into bedroom. I'll give you some energy. And you can <laughs> read $100,000. I got your energy right here. <laughs> I got it for you. Heck yeah. I like that. I like that response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. All right. So a minute ago, or a few minutes ago, you said the one, woman, I really want to be a goddess, but I don't have the money. So mm -hmm. just so the readers understand, and I want to learn a little more about your program, like who is a goddess and how do you help them become one? <laughs> yeah. So I have the pinnacle of working with me is the goddess wealth circle. And this is the woman who has gone through, you know, the different levels with me, starting with one of the things I know everyone needs when they meet me is to be reminded of these principles that I talked to talk about. It's not to learn them. It's to remind yourself the supply is infinite. Mm -hmm. I already am wealthy right? I have everything that I desire, but I just need to remind myself and I need to align to wealth. And so the first introduction in working with me is to really take everyone through that process of realigning to wealth, becoming the wealthy version of you. And then the next level, we go into taking the all, all of that. Now you're full, you're overflowing with alignment to wealth. And now we go, okay, now how do you want your business to look? so that it funds the life you want. And then after we do that, you're you're jiving, you're at multiple six figures, all the good things. And you know what? I'm going to be very vulnerable and honest with you. As much as I teach wealth and showing people how to manifest and create wealth, honestly, Kelly, the thing that I'm the proudest of is that people end up with the life they want. Yeah. Not like rev revenue streams that take life away, but actually what they're really getting is like the life. Everybody wants more money so they can have the life. A lot of coaches show you how to get the money at the sacrifice of your life, right? Mm -hmm. I want to show you, tell me the life you want, and I'll show you the ways to use the universal principles to create the wealth that gives it to you. So we get to that with when we work on our business. And then the, the creme de la creme is to become a goddess. A goddess is a woman who's ready 
to change humanity with her contribution. Mm. She is ready to build an empire that is legacy creating for generations to come, not only in her lineage, but her community, the world. She owns her time. Mm. She knows what she deserves and she stands for it. Not like, oh yeah, you know, like entitled in a that kind of way, but like everything within her is just like plugged into, I deserve the best. I deserve it. And therefore life mirrors it back to her and gives it to her. And the most fun part is we go away on luxury vacations. (laughs) We get away from the world and we literally shut the world out in a beautiful place somewhere. Our next uh, retreat, I believe will be in Ibiza in the spring of next year. And it's just like, let us just be in this well creating vortex and we create where we're going next. Mm. And so, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to go grab a check. (laughs) because <laughs> i want to be in that you're project. gonna write write write, check write to me check. right now <laughs> asha i want to be a goddess.com <laughs> and so it is and so it is and so, so it is. if somebody's interested in that i mean first of all i want to say now everybody knows why i've asked you to teach the wealth mindset master class in november for momentum um and i'm so excited that you're going to do that and we have the date all set up I think November 7th, I believe. And yes, to, yes. to get to take that masterclass, you can be part of the momentum um, and the momentum circle, actually. <laughs> I love it. Momentum effect. And, uh, but tell people if they're interested in your program, how to reach you. So I think the easiest way, I actually have a journal. It's it's wealth with ease and it's just a 30-day affirmation journal. You know, people always, people love journaling and then you get a blank journal and you're blank, right? <laughs> yeah. So I created this 30-day, I love to journal. I've created millions of dollars just with journaling. So I created this free resource uh, that anyone can download. You just go to wealthwitheasenow.com wealthwitheasenow.com and you'll get the um, the PDF. You can just download and print it and it really helps guide you. So say, for example, you're looking to manifest a specific amount in the next 90 days, right? For 30 days, I give you guided affirmations to help support you and a little process to help support you in staying aligned to that vision, staying aligned to that number. And then you get to send me emails and text and phone calls saying, oh my God, Tasha, I manifested it. So that's that uh, 30 day journal. And the reason why I offer this, it gives everyone an insight into the power of journaling, what I'm about in terms of how you can create wealth with ease, like you can journal your way to wealth. And then once you're in the system, you get all the things, right? You get all the Instagram connections, Facebook lives that I do, YouTube, all of it. But this is a really good place to start. Awesome. And you do have a book called Deservingness, The Art of Getting More of What You Want. Yes. And um, and I am so excited when every, anybody who goes through Momentum will also receive a copy of that book um, because I want them to not not just hear your 90-minute masterclass, but also be able to read your book and, and keep going. So, yeah. okay, thank Tasha, thank you. You've blown my mind. I have a full page of notes. <laughs> Uh, I you love continue that. to inspire me. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm I'm grateful for that. I think um, before I met with you, which was a very life changing conversation back in May, I think. Yeah, May. Mm-hmm. Um, I think two weeks before I had written this card. I will create a safe community for women to share about their lives and encourage each other to grow and dream. Wow. And and on the other side which is so weird because on all my other cards that I was doing the Jack Canfield success principles and doing my yeah I wrote my success is a direct reflection of the number of people's lives I help improve Mm. and I wrote that and two weeks later momentum was formed and now I have 12 women at the retreat (laughs) wow and so so I'm manifesting and you really inspired that so I can't wait for all the momentum people to meet you and and learn from you. I'm so excited. 
uh, I am excited continue to learn from you and work with you work with you yeah yeah <laughs> I love it thank you for having me and I'm really excited for the women in momentum one of the things that you can if you can't tell I'm really passionate about especially for us women is a conversation around deservingness and wealth mm. um, because believe it or not the women that I've served and it's been thousands every single one has a strong desire for wealth because they equate it to freedom of some sort, right? Yeah. But they don't believe they deserve it. Mm. And so this is going to be a powerful conversation. I'm excited for the women who join Momentum for us to work on that together. Yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last question, which I asked yes. my guests, yes, is yes. Tasha, what feeds your soul? Mm, there are two things that feeds my soul. Number one, to travel. Mm. I feel the most connected to God when I am in a beautiful location at the top of a mountain. <laughs> so feeds my soul the most. And then the second thing is, is this. Honestly, I feel so grateful to have had the life experience that I've had. So to be able to share it with anyone who wants to know, like it lights me up. It lights yeah. me up. Yep. You glow. I believe you. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Tasha, thank you. And listeners, um, thanks for um, tuning in and we will see you next Wednesday. All right. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. Kelly's book is available on Amazon and through your local bookstores. Look for the swipe right effect, the power to get unstuck. Kelly's interviews with 10 friends from around the world unlock powerful truths to getting your new life started 